So one of my New Year's resolutions for 2025 is to learn a new programming language and make something useful in it. And so I've been experimenting with Zig for my game development hobby. And honestly, it's looking like the language of choice for me for 2025. If you don't know what Zig is, it's a low level, high performance C-like language, but it gives you even more fine grain control. You allocate and deallocate your own memory, but you also specify how you want to allocate it using special allocators that you can even write yourself. Uh, there's also no hidden memory allocations and there's no hidden control flow. So if you think of things like operator overloading in C++, that doesn't exist in this language because you could consider it to be a little bit ambiguous. I don't like it when my plus equal sign allocates memory on the heap, so I generally lean towards the philosophy of Zig in this situation. And so yeah, I've been exploring Zig for game development for making my own little hobby projects, and I found it to actually be a pretty wonderful experience, mainly due to Zig's ability to seamlessly interrupt between C code, which basically enables you to use any C library that you want while programming in Zig. And so today I thought I would show you a couple areas of interest to keep in mind if you were looking to get into game development in Zig, and then I want to, you know, end, end off the video by showing you a cool little project that I've been working on. So I think for most people, the Raylib Zig bindings are exactly what you need. And basically all this is, is it's a very thin set of bindings over the Raylib C library that you can then easily use inside of any Zig project. Now, yes, you can actually just directly use Raylib inside of a Zig project, but I do find this to be a little bit smoother, especially with setting up for most people. Um, and so I thought I would just show you quickly how to set this up because it's pretty useful to know. And so in order to do that, you have to first install Zig, uh, which you can go to their download page here and you can either download one of their zip files here and then just add that to your path. Or if you are on a good operating system with a universal package manager, then you can just do like, you know, for me it's homebrew. So brew install Zig and it will install for you. Now I already have it, so it's just going to tell me that I already have it, but it would install for you and then you would be up and running. So now that we have Zig installed, we can just navigate to a directory where we want to actually put our project. And for me, that's going to be my Zig directory here. I'm just going to make a directory called like YouTube Raylib example here and then just CD into that directory. And now to actually make this a Zig project, we can run Zig init which will create uh, four files and one directory here. So I can just list directory here and list what's in source. As you can see, we have a build.zig and a build.zig.zon, and then we have a main.zig and a root.zig. Now, in order to add a dependency, we're going to be modifying the build.zig and we're going to be using a zig command to automatically add stuff to our build.zig.zon. And so let's go ahead and do that and add Raylib as a dependency. So in order to actually add Raylib to your project, you can just go to the Raylib SIG repository, scroll down a bit, and we have this command here, which will actually fetch the um, library that we want to use. So I'm just going to copy that, go here, paste it in, and it's going to fetch it like that. But that's not it to install a library. It's not quite as easy as like Go or NPM, but that's because the Zig build tools uh, provide a lot more customization with how you want to work with the libraries. So you wanna open up your build.zig. First, let's actually copy what we need from here. So what we need is we need to actually grab the Raylib dependency, and then we need to actually grab these um, modules here. So let's just copy that code and just go somewhere here. So I'll put it like, I'll put it like right here. And the next step is to actually link the library and then add the import paths for Raylib and Ray GUI here. So I'll just copy that code and let's go after we make the exe and let's paste that in there. And that's all that we need to do to actually have Raylib set up. So now what we can do is we can just put like zig build run and let's see if it will run without blowing up. Um, now it is going to take a little bit longer than normal because we do actually have to build Raylib. So it's going to be doing that in the background here, but it will be telling you what it's building. And as you can see, we have no errors, which means that we should be good to go. So let's actually open this up and go to our main.zig file, which has a bunch of noise, but we can just get rid of all of it. So I'm just going to empty out the main function and get rid of our test here. And so now we just have a very empty Zig application. We can then do const rl equals at import and then do raylib here. 
and then we can basically write Raylib code, but in Zig, which just given how Raylib is extremely simple to use, it is also pretty darn simple to use Raylib in Zig. So I can just do RL and then I have all of the stuff that I would normally have without a namespace in C, but now it does have a namespace. So if you wanna use windows.h with this, it won't scream at you. So now we can do like init window here and specify the width, um, the height, and then like zig raylib example here and then we can utilize one of the cool features of zig which is the defer keyword and we can defer rl.close window so that we don't forget to paste it in at the bottom of our application then we can just make a regular while loop and just say like while not rl.window should close and then we can do rl.begin drawing rl.end drawing here and then we can actually clear the background here with rl.color i think it's an i think it's in a struct called color yeah, and then it's sky blue. And that's all that we need to do for our like, hello world Raylib project. So I can then run zig build run here. And as you can see, I now have this awesome, uh, you know, sky blue window here. So pretty cool stuff. So as you can see, getting up and running with a Zig project can be a bit easier than getting up and running with a C project. Um, Cause in the C one, you would have to build it from source and then you'd have to make sure that the libraries and frameworks are on your device. And then you would have to have platform dependent uh, GCC commands that you would throw into a CMake file or a make file. And a lot of that is abstracted away from you. But what I really like about the Zig build system that I originally didn't like when I was trying to learn it, but I've come to actually really appreciate is that even though it's easier to use, you still have absolute control over everything. And it's not kind of like other build systems where you add it and there's some mystical linking that's happening in the background where you don't really know what's going on, but it just kind of works. I like how you still know what's going on a little bit with this, especially if you want to dig into how things are working in the background here. And we literally could, we could just like go to this Raylib Zig here, go to their build.zig and let's see what they're doing. So as you can see, they have done the, the hard work for us, uh, but it's actually still using the exact same build system that we are using ourselves, which is really, really cool. So you can actually inspect what's actually going on in the background whenever you are building stuff. With CMake, I find that it's a lot harder to do that because CMake is just really unreadable in large projects. This this, since it's in Zig, it makes more sense because Zig is, you know, I think Zig is a little more readable than CMake. Okay, so great. You can build a C library in Zig. So does that mean that you should switch over completely? I would say no. If Raylib Zig was the only thing out there, then I would be very hesitant to try out Zig for game development. However, there are some other success stories that I have looked at and I have really appreciated my time trying them out. And so one of those is actually SDL3, but it's a fork of SDL3 that's built with the Zig build system. So it's actually literally just the SDL3 repository, but they switched it over to a build.zig, which you can open up here. And yeah, it's it's a pretty intense build.zig, but it is built on zig, which means that adding it into your project is as easy as these two commands yet again. So if you want to use SDL3, which is absolute bleeding edge as it literally came out the day of recording this video, you can use it in zig very easily because this actually just works right off the bat. And one library that I am partial towards is the SoCal library. If you aren't familiar with SoCal, I can just open it up here. It is a header only like STB style um, C library for making cross platform games. And so it's really, really cool because everything is just inside of these header files here. So we just open them up and they are huge because it's, it's, you know, it's an entire library and a header file, but you can just drop these in and with the appropriate libraries and linking and everything, you can get your project up and running perfectly fine. And the really cool thing about SoCal, which is why I like to use it, is because one, it's easy to use, and two, it uses different graphics APIs depending on the operating system, and it abstracts away that platform dependent code that you would normally have to write. So for me, you know, when I'm working on my Mac, I can, you know, test my code running Metal, and I can have it be running OpenGL on Linux, and then I can have it run DirectX on Windows. And I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So, you know, by the way, if you if you didn't know about SoCal, it's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, but one thing that isn't awesome about the experience, which is no fault of SoCal, is getting things to build on different platforms. I find that it's extremely hard for me to build my projects on Mac and on Windows and on Linux. Maybe it's just a lack of knowledge on my part because I don't have 
have the the quirks of every operating system in my head so i have to always look at documentation of like how do i get this thing to build but i would prefer something that's a bit more streamlined and that's where so-called zig comes in which is actually maintained by the author of so-called so if you've ever wanted security and a dependency there you go um but the so-called zig repository is extremely cool because it just makes it so seamless like you can just you can just use so-called and it will work on everything because it uses a bunch of different graphics apis and you don't have to worry about you know what is the gcc command for compiling it on mac or compiling it on linux now it would be a big miss of mine if i didn't mention the zig game dev project which is a bunch of libraries for making games in zig and the only reason that i didn't mention them originally is that they track the nightly builds of zig and i stay on the official release which is 0.13.0 and so i have i haven't been able to actually build them for my projects because I, I don't use that version of Zig. However, they have some really cool stuff here. Um, as you can see, they have stuff like audio and um, GLFW. They have a math library. They have they even have their own SDL here for SDL2 and SDL3. And they have a bunch of other things, uh, other tools that you would need for Zig game development. The absolute biggest project in Zig that I've seen for game development is the Mock Engine, which if I were to put it into terms that other people could understand, think of this as like maybe something like the Bevy engine where you have a very powerful ECS powering the entire thing. So this isn't generally how I like to make games. I generally like things to let me pick how I organize my data. Um, but this is really cool, especially if you're coming from the a Rust background and you want to make things with, you know, the ECS, which is a cool thing. It's just not something that I generally like to do for fun. But yeah, it's, it's very extensive. It has pretty decent documentation and it's heavily in development and it's all open source of course so it's definitely something to keep in mind if you want that sort of experience i thought that i would show you this little thing that i've spent like two days working on um, it's a little engine that i'm writing that i plan on using for some small physics simulations and i've been writing it in zig and it's been a really great experience so let's go ahead and just run zig build run here and let's see what we have so you know i have my little skybox here i have this thing it's doing a helix just for demonstration purposes i have i'm gui set up and that was extremely easy to set up by the way and i have some like i can do the camera fov i can just like change this i can add some velocity it's a little project that i've been working on for a couple days and I have found the experience of setting up this stuff extremely nice. And I have also found the experience of working with Zig to be really, really good in comparison to just like straight up using C where I'd have to like write my own array list, which I'd rather not do you know, all the time. And so, yeah, what I'm basically arguing here is that SIG has been a really good upgrade for me from directly using C to using C with a lot of extra modern goodies without being a C++ style language where they just throw everything at it and none of it is good. Um, so I have been really invested in Zig so far in 2025. I mean, we're only a few weeks in, but it's been really, really fun. And so I'm basically just making this video to share this excitement that I have been um, experiencing in Zig to hopefully have a bump up in the community of people that want to write games in Zig. Now, as I said earlier, this language is very new. It's only at version 0.13. So don't expect extreme stability, expect things to break just as they did before Rust was 1.0 expect things to change and you having to go back and change things in your code base but also keep this in mind as a pretty cool language in the realm of systems programming now i don't want to just sit here and praise zig for all of its good without mentioning some of the things that i do not like about the language and most of them i do see being fixed in the future so it doesn't really worry me too much However, I have found that the LSP for Zig is extremely lacking for me. There's a lot of times where I change the type of something, like maybe I have a struct that I've, that I've declared, and then I remove one of the fields of that struct, but I'm using that field in a function. It will not actually give me an error, it will just sort of like change colors. So I don't, I don't have my jump to error thing that I normally use inside of NeoVim. So I don't actually catch the error and I catch it by actually running my build command. And then it tells me, Hey, there's no field in this struct. 
So it's definitely a looser LSP than something like Rust, which will complain into infinitum about every single possible issue in your code base, but it's okay. It's not like a deal breaker. It's still better than runtime errors, so that's fine. Another thing that is directly a symptom of how young the language is that I have had issues with is the lack of documentation for some things, specifically some of the new additions to the build system. The build system seems to be one of the things that they're changing quite a lot recently. And I have noticed that there are some times where I'm trying to use a feature that I'm reading in an article and it doesn't have it or it's a different name or it's in a completely different struct or something like that. And I do have to do a little bit of digging and just kind of like brute forcing some problems to see if I can get them fixed. But in general, I have haven't had a ton of issues specifically with the libraries that I want to use, which are Raylib, SoCal, or SDL3. So given that I do have a lot of options still, I don't think that it's a very big problem and it's fine for my use case. With that being said, I basically just covered uh, two game libraries two sets of toolkits for making games and other visual applications, and then an entire full-fledged engine, the mock engine here. Um, so hopefully that was enough to sort of motivate you. Maybe you want to write your first Zig Hello World now. So hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you try out Zig. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below, or you can consider joining my Discord where a bunch of other developers and me are all there and we'll happily talk to you and answer your questions or just, you know, talk about random stuff. Um, also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.